All right, thanks uh, for coming here. I'm Sean from AOA Co. So I'm very glad to be here to share where, what we are doing for the full 10 liquid cooling end-to-end -end solutions for the higher reliability. So um, for today's topic, I will I mean, focus on the two parts. The first is, what does the high reliability mean? And the second is, what are our, our solutions that we call end-to-end -to -end solution? So first of all, what, what does the high reliability mean for the, uh, especially for the liquid cooled data center solutions? So, I mean, uh, in academia, reliability means that it is the extent to which uh, an experiment or a test or even uh, or measuring the procedure use the same results on the repeated trials. But for the industrial scale, what, when we talk about the reliability, it means the ability to perform the intended um, functions in the intended environment for the intended application of lifetime. So what does this for the liquid cooling data centers? That means everything happening after the liquid cooling system is put into, put into operations. So, <clears throat> okay. So how, how do we evaluate the re uh, reliability? So physically, uh, okay, so when, when I did my PhD, in, 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 I mean here in Penn State, in, uh, I tried to repeat all, all my um, you know, experiment results and also I can ask my advisor, can I, can I, okay, so this is a good result and also I get another set of results. Can I publish some of them? But my advisor told me, okay, let's do it again. Let's try it again so we can do these re 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 reliability tests. Okay, so before that, usually I will do some physical modeling so how we can, how, 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 how is the physics or fundamentals of these kind of failures? So then I will continue my lab scale tests. But after that, what about the real data? What about the engineering pr practice? So that's why we put a lot of, I mean, practice and even engineering units to the data center after, the, we, we, get a, we collect a lot of data from after the, even the cooling system into um, deployment. So in total, up to now, uh, up to this last queue, uh, 2024, around 1.2 gigawatts of the liquid cooling thermal systems are deployed in, in, I mean, in China or even in the, in the Asia, uh, in, in Malaysia, in, in some, the, all, all over the world globally. So, but uh, here I will try to emphasize, we call it uh, 1.2 gigawatts liquid cooled thermal systems, which includes the, uh, the energy storage system, not only the data center systems. So, but, and also this is much more, <laughs> it's ongoing. Okay, so since we have, okay, so we have a basic, I mean, the, the physics, what does this high life mean? So let's come to the second part. What about the end-to-end -end solution? Okay, so now since the data centers are switched from air, so air cooled data centers for the liquid cooled data centers, data centers. okay, so the, the, the customers or even the end users say, Okay, so who will take the responsibility in case of any leakage? Okay, if I'm, uh, I mean, uh, I'm a component uh, supplier or vendor, I will say, okay, it's my responsibility for my action, right? But what about the whole system? What about the liquid system? If you have a cold plate, you have the QD, you have the pump, you have, you have the tubing, and you have the CDU, even with, even with the prime loop, you have the, you know, uh, the, the dry cooler or even the cold source. So, so, which is, very, which is kind of important to the end users or even to the customers. All right, so here, there's a small video to choose our end-to-end -end liquid cooling solution. Service covers compatibility analysis of liquid content. 
contacting materials. Liquid fluid medium detection. Full chain liquid leakage detection. AI leakage control of liquid cooling system. Oops, it's all right. Ah. Cool and I envy. Go see. Oh, can I? A liquid cooling solution. Ah. Guess me. Okay, here we go. <gasps> all right. Here's, I mean, the brief videos to, I mean, introduce what are the, what do we call the end-to-end -end full chain liquid cooling solutions. So basically, we try to uh, take the heat from the chip level and also transfer all the heat transfer and to uh, all the way to the heat sink, to the uh, even for primary loop to the uh, air to, to the cool source or even from to the cooling tower or even to a dry cooler. So basically, we provide all the solutions from even installations service and even design manufacturing inside, in-house. All right, so the full, the full control of the vacuum material, so during, since we have the coolant inside of the, uh, of the, even both the primary loop to the second loop, so there's a lot of, you know, metal, coolant, and even the piping stuff. Maybe they have, we have copper, alumina, and even stainless steel. So we try to take all that together and also do the capabilities of all these stuff together. So here, I just give you a brief introduction of what we do for the, all the uh, different materials. And also, so we also provide this stable and high precision oper on operating CDU. So during, I mean, so for each side, we also, uh, we also provide a liquid to liquid, liquid to air, or even liquid to refrigerant, different types of CDU. So most of the, most of the CDUs, um, I would say it was uh, uh, the, all of them. Uh, all of them, we have different applica uh, different applications are used. So, uh, for example, for some of the cases in China, we have three years of the I mean operating CDU, and it also we kind of have say high reliability because when, which I mentioned before, you know, high reliability is on, on is based on the data after uh, deployment. So this is kind of we have a different I mean. Heat flux level, heat, heat flux levels for the power levels from CDU, uh, for the in for the uh, in rack CDU, even from the in cabinet CDU, and from 300 kilowatts to two megawatts. It also depends on the I mean the client's requirements. All right, this is the we call it oh, sorry air assisted um, <clears throat> liquid uh, liquid assisted air cooling. So in here, so so many people talk about the side car is basically also another. A, 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 another a, another a name of the sidecar. So right now, I mean, for the GB200, we can, I mean, the, the heat flux could, the, the power could be up to uh, 120 kilowatts. And it's kind of pretty easy for the modular deployment. And we also, for this kind of, uh, typ for this typical uh, the CDU, we also have the redundant pumps and fans. And we uh, try to have the low impedance air to air heat exchanger. Okay, so this is an in-rack type of CDU, and for uh, we have different type forms for you to air to use. And here is from I mean from liquid to air and to liquid to liquid, we have different types, and also depend on working conditions and depends on the uh, temperature difference from in and out. So basically, it's around six to six to twelve kilowatts for uh, six, six to eight six to eight kilowatts for the uh, liquid to air. And even for liquid to liquid, we can heat up to maybe 120 kilowatts. All right. So this is another issue about kind of pretty important for the QD or even UQD. So we have kind of patented, um, patented the design of the anti-splash blind manif uh, manifold. Maybe some of, some of you may ask me why we need this anti-splash. Because we do, we do uh, come across such of issues. Because in some cases, when, what we are deployed in China, so there's kind of huge leak. So that's why we come up, we come with this new idea, why we need this anti-splash. So even, I mean, the pumps or even connectors leaks, it will not kind of splash to the, uh, to the rest of the drag. 
All right, I will go brief, pretty quickly for the, uh, for the rest of the part. So the flow uniform, uh, for uniformity, since we have the blind manifold of the, uh, the manifold and even the, the QDs, so uh, we do have these flow, uh, flow simulations to the test and to the, uh, the whole rack foam manifold of the, of the test. This is the pre-fabricated uh, pipeline, so it's much easier. So we prefabricate, I mean, in-house in our own manufacturing. Then it's just need to ship it to the, uh, to the data hall. So this is uh, another issue about what we are doing the, the, the coolant. Because the issues, so now, I mean, everybody's talking about the coolant, the PFAS or something, something like that, and also EG20, EG and PG25. But every, I mean, coolants, they have the different, I mean, uh, characteristics. But the issues, one, uh, I mean, for some of the coolants, we made some issues. When you try to deploy the new, I mean, server, there's uh, still a time, the time gap between when you try to plug in and plug it off. I mean, the, the, the BIOS, the biomass, maybe could be come into this, you know, this second loop. This is what we, I mean, we take, we spend a huge of the time trying to, we, we spend a huge of time trying to, I mean, you know, deal with this kind of problem. Because we take this, we take the, I mean, the current out of, out of this server every three or every two months. I mean, the car is changing. So we also made them different tests. The pH number, you know, the conductivities. So we, we, we can share some of the data, so I mean, maybe later. And, Okay, so another, another, another topic is QD. So now, I mean, key connector is kind of a key point of the, I mean, the, the, the whole, I mean, secondary loop, even from the pipe primary loop. But the issue is, what are we, what are, why we are doing this? Because we try to reduce, we, have, we, we try to reduce the, uh, the flow uh, resistance during the loop so that we can reduce the, the pumping power. So we can have, I mean, we come across some new ideas. Maybe you, even we can use the UQD04, so we have the, I mean, the, Equivalent CVs with UQD or sticks. So that means we can have a compact design with this different connector. All right, for the code plate. So now, I mean, since Blackwell is, all, is already here, so it's maybe, I mean, 1,200, 1,200, but what about the next? So, I mean, from NVIDIA, they are talking about, I mean, the next series of the GPU, like Ruby, maybe over two, two maybe two kilowatts. So the issues, single phase, we, we also can do the single phase, I mean, code plate, but the issues, maybe you need the, the higher, you, mean, you know, the pumping power. But the issues, when we switch to the two phase, maybe we can reduce the pumping power and also we can have higher heat flux level. So this kind of trade-off, we still, I mean, test, we, in our lab, in my team, they are still working on both of them, single phase and two phase of the code plate. So we also, I mean, since I'm talking about this is kind of the end-to-end -end liquid cooling, full chain liquid solution. So we also do, I mean, some, um, some uh, cooling of primary level stuff like this, uh, the cooling, the, the cooling source. All right, so this is another issue for the test kit. Why we do, why we do this? Because we also, I mean, I, I mentioned in, um, per, per, I, I mentioned before, we do have some kind of uh, issues. So there's a time gap between we try to insert and uh, take, out, take out of this server. So this we can do it. I mean, on side of the of the uh, data hall. Data hall. All right. See, so this is also the um, air cooling part. And so, I mean, in total, as I mentioned, right now we also uh, deploy over around 1.2 gigawatts for the liquid cooling the thermal systems. All right. So what's more? What's the next? So everybody talking about the liquid cooling solutions, right? So. Uh, in some of the carriers, we also try to think about the heat, West heat recovery systems, right? Since now, I mean, in some people in some regions like the Europe or even the, I mean, the Japan or even, I'm not sure about the US, but some, uh, they try to use the West heat of liquid cooling, try to heat the community, you know, the, the buildings, even the hospitals, and even in the past summer, in last summer, all the Olympic Games of the swimming pool are, I mean, heated by the data center, the West heat. But the issues, what about, I mean, the hot region, hot, hot region? Maybe they do not need the heating, right? The issues, maybe we can come up with some new ideas. What about we can use the wet heat to generate the cooling? But the, the issues, the data center do need the cooling. So we call it maybe, uh, we, we, some, something is still on, I mean, <laughs> it's, it's in the lab scale. We are building some demos on, on this kind of, we call it absorption chiller. The absorption chiller, the, the fundamentals of this absorption, because we can use the, let's say, maybe 50 to, five, 50 to 60 degrees C of the hot water to generate the, 
chilled water. And the chilled water will go back to the data center. Maybe there's another issue topic. We can call it a self-cooling data center. Right? So this is kind of an interesting idea. So something is still going on. So this is the next what we are doing right now and for the next year. All right. So this is the topic. Sorry. For a little bit of time. Thanks so much. I'm Sean. Thank you.